All right, welcome back. Um, recording from uh, MTU shared office, so masking up here. Um, I want to talk about the case of artist René Magritte and his Période Vache, which I had mentioned uh, in one of the earlier videos. Um, Magritte is a well-known member of the Surrealist movement, um, which uh, ran from about 1920 to 1950. And these artists, um, Salvador Dali is also another uh, really well-known member of this movement. Um, they would paint, draw, sculpt uh, scenes that relied heavily on realism. So you've got the word sur you've got the word realism within the term surrealism. Um, but they would insert kind of illogical or like fantastic elements into their artwork, um, creating a there's there's a sense of the uncanny in them because they are so representational. Uh, then there's these um, strange uh, occurrences going on. We're going to see some examples in a minute. Um, a big big uh, element of the subconscious uh, played a role in surrealist artwork. They were really trying to to free the subconscious. Oh, okay. So some examples of Magritte's um, earlier work that he's uh, pretty well known for here. He liked to play a lot with viewpoint, scale. Very interested in big questions. You can see that this um, artwork's called The Human Condition. And then uh, I show you some of those early works to demonstrate that um, Magritte is a master of representational painting. Um, I don't know if I would call these necessarily photo representational, but um, or photorealistic, but they are definitely uh, a highly representational artworks, as is um, the trend for for most of surrealism. And then there was uh, a period in his career that he um, started making artworks that uh, crit critics originally called it the période vache, um, translated uh, from French into English. This is the cow period. And no, he didn't start painting uh, artworks of cows. Um, these were works that he created for his first solo art show. So that's um, in opposition to group art shows, uh, art shows that have lots of different artists in them. A solo show is, is a pretty high point in an artist's career, particularly their first one. And this was uh, in 1948 in Paris. Um, so we're talking about uh, the Second World War here, right? The end of the Second World War which changed a lot of people's um, mentality, it changed the world, right? These paintings were made over a five week period. And this is important because um, most surrealist artwork was, you know, these, these are long labored artworks. They, you know, a lot of them are in oils. They're labored over to get that um, representational uh, appearance to them. They're not one-offs. These artworks were created um, with an immediacy, uh, an urgency over a five week period. They are, there are 17 oil paintings and 20 gouache paintings. This, this might be a new term for some of you. Um, gouache is a type of paint. It's, we're gonna learn more about it when we cover art materials, um, but it is a relative of watercolor. Uh, so it's water-based, unlike oil paint. It's used quite a bit by artists now. Um, back uh, mid 20th century, this was a paint that was really reserved for designers, like graphic designers, interior designers, that type of thing. It was not really considered to be a fine art medium. So he's, he's working um, with material, with media that is uh, sort of considered lowbrow. These artworks, as I said before, were uh, done quickly in the name of freedom. And he really you know, flew in the face of a lot of aesthetic and moral um, prescriptions, regulations of the day. It is a, these artworks are a radical departure from his earlier um, style that uh, he's really more well known for, I would say. The Période Vache, uh, we're gonna see some garish tones. Um, so, you know, a lot of really bright kind of clashy colors, um, grotesque and caricatured subjects. He does draw from the, the vernacular, the lowbrow, uh, not just in his media, but in his um, subject matter as well. 
Magritte himself is a Belgian um, working in Paris, uh, and he kind of developed, you know, a, a, in combination with this shock from the, sec the events of the Second World War, um, he was seen as a little bit of an outsider um, in the, the French and the Parisian art community because he was not, you know, from there. Um, even though he, he's a French Belgian, a French speaking Belgian person, um, he's sort of, you know, embracing some of these stereotypes uh, the Parisians had is insofar as Belgians being, you know, coarse and provincial. Um, the Période Vache plays on a lot of those stereotypes. And it also functions as a protest against the arrogance of the Parisian um, surrealists. In essence, a lot of critiques called um, the Période Vache a sabotage of painting. Um, and the images are are almost like it's a symbol of anarchy almost. He's kind of trying to usurp the order um, that painting uh, had been kind of representing up until that, this point. So stop talking and let's see the art. So here we go. And this one is um, one of those caricatures. It's uh, reminiscent of a Belgian cartoon character that um, from like comics. I'm particularly fond of this one because it is so hard to look at like that tartan in the background um with that yeah that screaming red tree in the foreground he's he's working like really gesturally really loosely um this is one of the works that's the gouache uh, which is that designer paint on paper and these artworks were designed to spark outrage um, as you can imagine, the, the show at the Faubourg opened, um, 1948, and critics just hated it. They, they could not fathom why somebody who was as skilled as a painter um, that Magritte was would exhibit um, these, these atrocities that they saw. Uh, we've, we've sort of looked, we've discussed why he would do it. It's, you know, a reaction to um, the horrors of the Second World War, a reaction to him kind of being classed as a, a second class artist by the the Parisian surrealists um, and also just wanting to get some freedom to, to loosen it up to make a declaration of anarchy on painting. Another gouache work. And then just like that, this is Magritte himself um, with a quote here. Georgette is his wife, by the way. So I'm just letting you letting you read it. Um, the approach that he's talking about is la période vache, um, <laughs> and he's saying that he would continue working in this style, but there's his wife, <laughs> who prefers the well-made paintings um, of his early career. Uh, so in order to make his wife happy, um, he goes back to, to painting uh, in the traditional surrealist style. And he goes on to produce some of the artworks that he's probably best known for um, post uh, La Période Vache. Um, I don't know, it just seems like a bit of a, I'm, I'm of course, you know, critiquing what's said is said, um, but I feel like it's, it's a bit of a, a flimsy um, reason to go back to, to, to change your art style because your wife prefers it. And then uh, here are some of the artworks post um, the cow period that you may recognize. And of course, critics were so relieved. By 1964, the style was starting to get, you know, this is past surrealism's prime. So he's working in a bit of a dated style at this point, but um, it's the style he's best known for. I don't know, you gotta hand it to the guy for having uh, the the guts to to produce such such artworks of daringly bad taste. So hopefully this um, shines a light on one reason why artists would produce something that is uh, that that most critics agree um, is bad art. So thank you for uh, for sticking with us, and please let me know if you have any questions.